Grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. We want to welcome you to another Freedom Moment. It's Sunday, February 14th, Valentine's Day, 2021. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you and bless you, Lord God, on this beautiful day. We thank you once again, Lord God, for getting us through another week. We thank you, Lord God, for pouring out your love upon us. Father, we pray and we ask for your forgiveness, your mercy, Lord God, because we haven't been as loving as we could be to others. But Father, now change our hearts, cleanse us, Lord God, so that we can not only serve you in love, but we can love one another. Father, we thank you once again for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your guidance, Lord God, during this time period. Father, we ask for wisdom, Lord God, to be spread upon our leadership, Lord. Father, so that we can live in peace. Father, we thank you once again. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Speak to our hearts during this beautiful fellowship time, Lord God. We'll give you all the glory and all the praise. We thank you. In Jesus' name we ask. Everyone in agreement said, Amen. Looking for fellowship, prayer, or Bible study? You can get in touch with us at home or on the go. Just go to www.freedomfellowshiprb.org or you can catch us on Twitter at Freedom Rockaway. See you there. The scripture lesson for this morning is taken from the first book of Samuel. First Samuel, we're reading from the New International Version, First Samuel chapter 17, beginning at verse 32. Listen to what it says. David said to Saul, let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. Saul replied, you are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You are only a young man and he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it, and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. Then Saul dressed David in his own tunic. He put a coat of armor on him and a bronze helmet on his head. David fastened on his sword over the tunic and tried walking around because he was not used to them. I cannot go in these, he said to Saul, because I am not used to them. So he took them off. Then he took his staff in his hand, chose five smooth stones from the stream, put them in the pouch of his shepherd's bag, and with his sling in his hand, approached the Philistine. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his holy word. The text for today's message is taken from the gospel according to St. Mark. Mark's gospel, we're taking one verse from the sixth chapter of St. Mark. Mark chapter 6, and verse 8. Listen to what it says. These were his instructions. Take nothing for the journey except a staff. No bread, no bag, no money in your belts. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you and we bless you and we thank you once again. We thank you, Father, for your patience with us. 
We thank you, Lord God, for helping us to overcome so many times, Lord God, of difficulty. Father, now speak to our hearts. Lord God, prepare us to serve you in such a way, Lord God, that we can rejoice in our relationship with you. Father, we thank you once again. We thank you for what you're going to say to us through your Holy Spirit. We thank you once again for the directions you're going to give us on this journey. Father, bless us like never before. Holy Spirit, have your way. Send down your anointing, Father. It makes teaching easy, and it makes understanding even easier. We'll give you all the glory. We'll give you all the praise. It's in Jesus' name we ask. Everyone in agreement said, Amen. Jesus is instructing his disciples as he sends them out in the mission field to bring other people to him, to bring other people to faith, to change their lives eternally. And as you go on that mission, he says, take nothing for your journey except your staff. In other words, how you're going to walk <laughs> Amen. Don't worry about bread. Don't worry about a bag. Don't worry about any extra money. Jesus, talking to his disciples, to us followers. Amen. Why is he doing that? Because guess what? We're on a journey. Saints, we are on a journey called life. Amen. So what's Jesus trying to say to us disciples, us followers? Watch what you're taking with you. Listen to what he says. His instructions for us to live our lives. He wants us to watch what we take with us. Amen. In our scripture lesson, David learns that victory isn't a destination. It's really a journey. Amen. It's a journey of steps. That's what our lives are comprised of. Steps taken. One goal to another. One plateau to another. Sometimes we trip during those steps, especially if you're like me. Listen, David learned that Goliath was just a step in his journey toward gaining a kingdom. Remember, he was set to become a king. Saints, Israel was on a journey. We just finished in our weekly Bible study talking about the exodus of the Jews from Egypt. Israel was on a journey. Amen. And we can take a lot from Israel's journey into the wilderness. Listen, Israel's journey, watch this, in a nutshell. They were freed, amen, from Egypt. They went to Sinai, Mount Sinai, they got directions. And then they were on their way to the promised land. Saints, here's your takeaway, watch this. We're freed in Christ Jesus. Now he's given us directions by his word. And we're on our way, that's our journey, through life. Amen, lots of ups and downs. Right now, we're in a valley as a nation. We're going through. Many individuals, the journey is turning very, very hard. Amen. So, saints, what can we do to make our journey better? What can we do to make our journey easier? What can we do to make our journey more successful? Need a title for today's message. It's traveling light. <laughs> Amen. God wants you to travel light. That's what's going to make your journey better. That's why the disciples got the instructions from the Lord as they set out on their journey to bring people to the cross. We need to be traveling light. Pastor, so what are you trying to say? What is Jesus trying to leave with us by this word? Well, here's one thing we can do. Leave the baggage. <laughs> Amen. Leave the baggage, saints. 
I like the way the Psalms of David gives us a little bit of instruction. In Psalm 95, the psalmist says this in verse 10, New International Version. For 40 years, God speaking to the Israelites, for 40 years, I was angry with that generation. I said, they are a people whose hearts go astray and they have not known my ways. Saints, 40 years, Israel. Remember, they had an exodus, but their journey became longer. Listen, a 40-year journey they had in the wilderness. And by the way, if you go and you read it for yourself, it really was a simple journey. The stretch from uh, uh, Egypt over to the promised land should have taken no time in comparison to the 40 years that they spent in the wilderness. So here, here's the question, really. What makes your simple journey feel like forever? And here's the answer, saints. Watch this. It's what you're carrying. <laughs> Amen. Look, when you're carrying a heavy load, wow, it feels like the journey is taking forever. It's forever before you can actually put that baggage down and actually get some rest. What, what are you trying to say, Pastor? Listen, we, we got a hint in our scriptures about what made their journey go from a simple journey to a 40-year journey and a toil. Number one, they had idols. Were, the baggage that, that Israel was carrying were idols. Amen. The Egyptian idols. Amen. Listen, what they had, and, and remember, when they got into the Sinai region, they went and they made an idol that they were used to seeing in Egypt. They carried the same concept of idolatry out of Egypt. That's why they made the golden calf. The golden calf was one of the gods of Egypt. Wow. Are you carrying baggage in the way of an idol? Listen to what God says in Exodus chapter 32 and verse 35. The Bible says this, and the Lord struck the people with a plague because of what they did with the calf Aaron had made. Wow. Saints, where do plagues come from? They come from the idols that we're carrying. The idols that we create. Oh, come on, uh, Pastor. You know, I don't have any idols. I'm a good Christian person. Come on, put on your spiritual thinking caps. What idols do we have today? What extra baggage in the way of idols are we carrying? How's about your TV? Has your TV become an idol? Or maybe your wardrobe is an idol, your clothes. You know, you got to look good. What baggage are you really carrying? How's about money? Some people have fallen by the wayside in their faith because of money. Or maybe your career has become an idol to you. Huh? Or maybe your physique. Maybe you're a macho muscle person, huh? And you just always want to be in such shape that basically your shape and your physique has become your idol. And now that's your extra baggage on your journey. Saints, we're looking at it unfold in front of us. Some people have chosen their political candidate as an idol. Wow. Amen. So that even after one candidate has been removed from office, some individuals are still carrying that individual as an idol. Wow. What baggage are you carrying on your journey into the new year? How's about an attitude problem? Many individuals are carrying an attitude. Amen. They leave one relationship and they carry that attitude from that relationship into the next relationship. Guess what? That's baggage. <laughs> and your journey into that new relationship is going to go south 
real quick. Why? Because you're carrying the attitude and the baggage from the old relationship. You're headed for trouble again. And listen, if you're carrying baggage, let's go to the current day and age. Now it costs you to bring baggage on your flight. Saints, baggage is going to cost you. Amen. Leave your baggage. If you really want to have a great journey, a great life, leave your baggage behind. If you really want to minister and bless other people, leave the baggage behind. Why? Because, again, look at our airlines. It's going to cost you now to carry that baggage. Another thing you can do to go a little bit lighter on your journey, to travel lighter, you might want to change your menu. <laughs> Praise God. Change your menu. Listen to what the Bible says in Exodus. Exodus chapter 16 and verse 35. The Bible says the Israelites ate manna for 40 years until they came to a land that was settled. They ate manna until they reached the border of Canaan. Saints, 40 years God fed them. By the way, their menu for their journey, their 40-year journey, was what God gave them. Praise God. Wow. And, and God gave them a new menu. And why did God give them a, good, a new menu? Think about it, okay? Manna from heaven, quails coming up. Huh? Why did God... Uh, get involved in their menu. It's simple, because watch this. They couldn't carry, they couldn't have possibly carried or brought enough food for their journey. There's no way, there's no way you're going to be able to carry everything you need in the way of sustenance for all of your days, for your life's journey. What are you trying to say, Pastor? You're going to have to rely on God to give you something that we call in the faith, watch this, daily bread. Amen. Wow. I, I, you know, many individuals wish they could carry enough for them to live out their whole life. No, you're not going to be able to carry uh, 10 years or 20 years or 30 years of sustenance and food. No way. And so God is asking us not to, not to carry a load of stuff with us, but to change our menu to what? To what he is going to provide. Saints, some of us, the problem is our big appetite. Amen. I was watching a show, a show that was dealing with people that hoard. Wow. And many of us are hoarders. By the way, you're not going to be able to hoard. I knew somebody that used to buy endless food even when they didn't need food. And even when it was just them and their husband, they continued to buy food, food, food. And then after their husband died, they continued to buy more food. And their, their, their whole cupboard was full of food. Their refrigerator packed their freezer to the brim. Why? They weren't able to eat all of that. And then when they passed on, a lot of that stuff went to waste. Saints, you're not going to be able to carry everything you're going to need to consume with you. I'm saying that you're going to have to trust God for your daily bread. Change your menu to what God is going to provide. Change your appetite to say, Lord, if you're giving me this during this journey, it's because you know this is what I need to get to the next step in my life. God is going to feed you what you need. Saints, what am I trying to say? Leave your baggage. Change your menu. And then, and this is very important, drop the weight. Wow. What's weighing you down? Drop the weight. I like what the writer of Hebrews says to the church, his letter to the Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 12, listen to what it says in verse 1. 
New International Version. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Wow. The King James Version says, let's throw off the weight. Let's get rid of the extra weight. Wow. Again, you know, when we were reading our scripture lesson, and David, in his journey, meets up with Goliath. And he stops and he starts talking to Saul. Saul was the king. And if you go back and you read, the Bible said that Saul was huge. Saul, according to the Bible, King Saul, was a head length taller. He was a head, a head taller than every other Israelite. And David was not that tall. He was stocky and strong as a youth and a young person. Oh, so it, it's interesting that as he's ready to go out in this next part of his version, his, his next part of his, his journey with, with, with Goliath and, and getting to the kingdom, the Bible tells us that Saul says to David, here, put on my armor. There you go. Put on, take my armor, put it on, and go out there and fight. Remember, he's a young man. And, and so this big Saul gives David, little David, his armor. And David puts it on. We, we read it. David puts on the armor, and he's, he's, he's clinking around in it like a kid dressed in his father's clothes. He's clinking around in it. He's clinking around in it. It's heavy and cumbersome. And listen to what David says. I can't do this. I can't carry this. David says, I, I can't carry this, man. Take, take this weight off of me. Get this big helmet off of me. One version says, I haven't proven these things. I have never walked around in this. Drop the weight. And that's exactly what David did for his journey. The Bible says he got his sling. He got his little shepherd's bag. And he got himself some smooth stones. Saints, drop the weight. Sins become a weight to you. Sins will bog you down on your journey with the Lord. Amen. The writer of Hebrews tells us that. He says, drop the weight and the sin which easily entangles you. So sins should be dropped at the foot of the cross, saints. Take your sins. They're a weight. They're a weight in your journey with the Lord. And drop them off at the foot of the cross daily. Pastor, what are you trying to say? Take your sins. Everything you've messed up, you've goofed up, you've tripped up. Oops, you made a mistake. Fine. Whatever you want to call it. And drop it at the foot of the cross every single day. And that's what I have to do every single day. Saints, let me make a confession. You ready? My tongue is what tends to weigh me down. <laughs> Amen. Pastor has a big tongue. Amen. There's things I shouldn't be saying, and I say them. Amen. You ever hear of a big mouth? That's Bill's problem. So listen, that's what I'm struggling with, and that's the thing that I have to drop off at the cross daily. What's weighing you down, Saint? Amen. What sin needs to be dropped at the foot of the cross. What's weighing down your journey? By the way, is it unforgiveness? Hmm. Wow. You, you mean unforgiveness, Pastor? You mean if I don't forgive, that's going to weigh me down? Yes, Saint. Unforgiveness will weigh you down. Why? Because it's carrying the sin of another on your journey. I'll say that again. Unforgiveness is just you carrying the sin of another. It's going to weigh you down. Remember, we talked about attitudes. Yeah. Well, the same thing with unforgiveness. You can't let go. You can't forgive and just leave that sin that that individual did against you so that you can be free and be lighter on your journey. Saints. Drop the weight. That's our call for this journey called life. Let's get our takeaway point. You 
Here's the takeaway point. We've been commissioned by Christ to drop our extra baggage and rely on God's provision for our journey. In other words, saints, we've been sent by Jesus, commissioned by him to go into the world and preach that gospel and to bring the love of Christ to other people. And we can't do that if we have extra baggage and we're being weighed down our journey is going to be short-lived. Saints, the reason why people are stressed out is because they're carrying so much on this journey called life. Amen. God wants us to drop the weight. He wants us to change our menu. He wants us to leave that extra baggage that you have. And let's finish up. Why should we do all that? Here's what we're going to leave you with, saints. The reason why you should leave all that baggage is because your cross is enough. Wow. Amen. Your cross is already enough. Listen, we all, I'll say it again, we all have our cross to bear. And your cross is enough. Don't you think you have enough on your plate already? Oh, wow. The journey is tough enough. You've got a job, you've got bills, you've got a hubby or a wife, you've got kids, you might even have a dog or a cat that you got to take care of. Yeah, you've got a lot of burdens and you've got people that you're dealing with, uh, you're dealing with vaccinations, you're dealing with all kinds of political strife, you're dealing with monetary issues. You have enough already that is on your shoulders. Listen to what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6. Matthew 6 and verse 34, Jesus is speaking in the Sermon on the Mount. He says, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day, listen to what he says, each day has enough trouble of its own. Wow. Saints, there's enough trouble. You've got enough problems already on your journey. You've got enough Goliaths that you have to defeat. You don't need to add the weight of worry to that. Saints, what's Jesus trying to say on our journey? Be careful of what you're carrying. Don't carry worry. Worry only adds weight to what you're already carrying. Amen. You got enough problems. Saints, do you realize on David's way to receiving the kingdom, remember he was set to be a king, on David's way to receiving a kingdom, look what he encountered. But what are you trying to say, Pastor? I'm trying to say this. On your journey to the kingdom, you're headed for a kingdom too. Kingdom of heaven. On your way to the kingdom, look what you'll have to encounter. How many things? And saints, you're already carrying enough. Your cross is enough. Stop worrying about tomorrow. Tomorrow has enough weight and worry of its own. Jesus tells us this in Matthew chapter 11. He says it so eloquently. He says, if you're following me, you're doing the right thing. Why? Because on this journey, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's his promise to us, to lighten the weight on us so that we can journey, saints, to that kingdom that's established for us. My friends, do you need the peace of God, the comfort of the Holy Spirit, the salvation of God through Christ Jesus? I challenge you to humble yourself before him now in the privacy of your home and talk to him. Ask him for forgiveness of your sins and invite him to be in charge of your life through the Lord Jesus. Trust him because he sees, he hears, and he'll respond to your honest prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you, first of all, for giving us a life, giving us this journey called life. Thank you, Lord God, that you have promised us that you will sustain us during this time and this journey that we call life. Help us, Lord God, as you sustain us, help us to be a blessing to others 
That's the call to go out and journey and bring the love of Christ to others. Help us, Lord God. Protect us on every side. Go with us this week. Lord God, we thank you for your word and we thank you for your love. In Jesus' name, everyone in agreement said, Amen. Remember John 8, 36. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed.